Introduction to Polymers Monomer versus Polymer Monomer is the molecule from which a polymer is synthesized, while polymer is the large molecule made up of many repeating units. These repeating units are monomers, so monomers form polymer. Polymerization is a chemical reaction in which the monomers are joined together by covalent bond. For example, this alkene, ethene, is a monomer or ethylene, it's a monomer. C double bond C, a molecule monomer. And then, many repeating units of this ethylene undergoes chemical reaction that join these molecules together, many ethylene molecules together, it undergoes polymerization reaction, it will form polymer by breaking one of its bond. This is double bond, so it's breaking one of its bond. One bond consists of two electrons. One electron given to this carbon, one more electron to this carbon. Okay, it will form new bond here it will form new bond one electron here one electron here and then one more molecule here will share the one electron with this carbon so one bond will be formed and then a lot of monomers will form polymer this is the polymer pattern ch2 repeating ch2 single bond between them because this double bond break the double bond one electron for each carbon it will form new carbon carbon bond carbon and another carbon bond one single bond repeating unit the actual structure that is being repeated in the polymer chain so for example this monomer starting material alkene Monomer is the starting material, the compound. Repeating unit is one monomer, but it's already in the polymer form. But you only show one, just a part of the polymer. Okay, repeating unit must be in polymer structure, but only show a part. That is the difference between monomer and repeating unit. Monomer, just one molecule. Repeating unit polymer structure but only one part only one okay means this c double bond c one of the bond one electron will be transferred to this carbon one more electron lone pair carbon and this one electron will be sharing with one more carbon here another monomer one more carbon with one electron then two electron will form one bond over here so that is the repeating unit. This new bond is formed, but you only show one. Okay, repeating unit, this is how you draw repeating unit. This is how you draw the polymer structure. You don't need to draw a lot of repeating unit to show the polymer structure. So what is the difference between repeating unit and polymer structure? In polymer structure, you write down number N, means this is the structure of polymer. If repeating unit, only one part of polymer. Polymer structure, one part but with N. So you are showing this is the polymer structure. Without the N repeating unit, with N it is polymer. Homopolymer versus copolymer. Homopolymer is a polymer that is made up of identical repeating units, mean the same type of monomer joined together same type of monomer but copolymers polymer made up of two or more different monomers means different type of monomer joined together to form polymer that is the difference between homopolymer and copolymer straight chain polymer versus cross link polymer for straight chain polymer, it is long continuous polymer chains in their basic skeletal structure. So it's just straight chain. This monomer 
joined together with another monomer joined together it's a long continuous straight chain this is straight chain polymer or you call it as linear cross link polymer is a 3d structure in which linear polymer chains are connected by bridges or cross linkage so one straight chain one long continuous straight chain connected together by bridge this is the bridge the bridge it links together this bridge link together the long polymer with one more long polymer and this long continuous polymer link together with another long continuous polymer so this is what we call cross link polymer in your syllabus you only learn about straight chain polymers and cross link polymer there are many other types of polymers such as branch polymer and network polymer for branch this one long polymer has branch but the branch is not connecting to another long polymer that is the difference between branch and cross link cross link it is linking the long continuous chain with another long continuous polymer but for branch it just has branch it doesn't link the long continuous polymer together that's the difference between branch and cross link and this is how network polymers look like natural polymers proteins carbohydrates and natural rubber are the examples of natural polymers proteins the combination of more than 10 amino acids will form polypeptides if it is a combination of more than 70 amino acids we call it as protein that's a different more than 10 amino acid polypeptides if more than 70 we call it as protein carbohydrates we have cellulose and starch example cellulose and starch carbohydrate the general formula for carbohydrates is CXH2OY or CXH2YOY this is a general formula for carbohydrates and this is the example for carbohydrates monosaccharide this is disaccharide monosaccharide only one and another one subunit disaccharide when you link two monosaccharides together with glycosidic linkage okay remove OH from one monosaccharide remove hydrogen from another monosaccharide and it will form side product water and the glycosidic linkage is between the oxygen it's connecting between the oxygen next natural polymer is natural rubber it occurs in latex of rubber tree latex is suspension of rubber particles in water a polymer of isoprene cis poly 2 metal 1 3 butadiene this is polymer of isoprene example for carbohydrate we have starch and cellulose so for starch starch is the main carbohydrate in the seeds and roots of plants in one amylose the glucose residues are connected by alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage so this is alpha glycosidic linkage or alpha glycosidic bond this is the bond the carbon bond with oxygen and this oxygen bond with another carbon plane this is the carbon plane of the starch structure of amylopectin molecule so this is the starch one monomer or we call it monosaccharide one monomer this carbon bond with oxygen connected to another molecule or another monomer oxygen connected to this carbon so when you have this bond if you look at this bond this bond OC bond or CO bond this bond is 90 degree to the plane this bond is 90 degree to the plane we call it as axial axial bond when it is 90 degree it is axial bond this one is not 90 degree to the plane the OC bond 
here is not 90 degree to the plane so you call it as equatorial bond alpha glycosidic bond is when you have 90 degree to the plane that is alpha glycosidic bond alpha 14 alpha 14 glycosidic linkage for cellulose same monomer if you look at same monomer here six total number of five carbon one two three four five carbon one oxygen and then one two three oh and then with this one two three oxygen in one monosaccharide in one monosaccharide you have five carbon three oxygen one two three oxygen and three oh one two three oh this is the start cellulose also have the same structure as the starch but the difference between cellulose and the starch is cellulose doesn't have axial the axial one it doesn't have the carbon oxygen 90 degree to the plane this one equatorial equatorial so both equatorial you call it as beta 1 4 glycosidic linkage cellulose the st principal structure components of plants a regular polymer of d glucopyranose residues connected by beta beta means there's no axial bond this is equatorial equatorial axial means the bond is 90 degree to the plane so there is no bond 90 degree to the plane so beta and there's 90 degree to the plane here we have alpha that is the only difference between starch and cellulose the number of atoms is the same the molecules are the same synthetic polymers synthetic polymers polymers that are prepared chemically by joining together the monomers we have two types of synthetic polymers condensation polymerization addition polymerization so two chemical process these two chemical process can produce synthetic polymers by condensation polymerization and addition polymerization for condensation polymerization when the name is condensation means the removal of water in order to form the polymer you need to remove water water example you can remove other things as well a chemical process in which two monomers join together to form polymers and eliminate smaller molecules such as water hcl or alcohols often methanol so that is condensation polymerization when elimination occurs in the polymerization you call it as condensation polymerization because there is elimination of small molecules formation of ester or amide linkages between molecules with two functional groups we also call it as step growth polymerization condensation polymerization also known as step growth polymerization polyamides this is the product of condensation polymerization kevlar polyamides the name kevlar kevlar is used for making bulletproof vests Echoing cable, reinforcing fiber, and fireproof garment. In order to form the Kevlar, you need 1,4 benzene dicarboxylic acid reacts with 1,4 diamino benzene. Heat, because we want to remove, eliminate smaller molecule. So heat here, Kevlar heat these two together. Heat in carboxylic acid remove the OH in amine here amine remove one hydrogen so the linkage amide linkage is between C double bond O with N so this C bond with N 
So this single bond here is the amide linkage. So this is Kevlar. This is what we call Kevlar. So this is Kevlar polymer. Elimination of H2O. Just remove OH in carboxylic acid. Remove one hydrogen in amino group. Another type of polyamides is nylon 6. Nylon 6 is used for making strong, flexible fibers for ropes and tire cord. You use epsilon caprolactam, H2O heat in the presence of water, and then heat to produce epsilon amino caprolic acid, and then heat to produce poly. 6 amino hexanoic acid. This is what we call nylon or perlon. Remove water as well. So here, this ring, ring of C double bond O contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon with 1 and H. So when you have water and then heat, this NH this NH will receive one hydrogen, so it becomes NH3 plus NH3 plus the NH part will receive hydrogen NH3 plus, and this C double bond O O minus. This C double bond O is this one C double bond O, and then it will get the oxygen from water. That's why this here O minus. This one C double bond O for this one. And then another 5 carbon. So that's why here CH25. Okay. CH25 because you open the ring. You open the ring to get the O minus. This ring will be open to get O minus. And then this NH3 receive one. Two hydrogen of water. That's why NH3. Initially NH only. Receive two hydrogen from water. And then one oxygen, it becomes O minus over here. This C double bond O, C double bond O. And then heat this epsilon amino caproic acid. It will become poly 6 amino hexanoic acid. This is nylon 6 or perlon. Remove water. Remove the H2 from NH3 plus here. H2, two hydrogen is removed from here. Living with NH only. And then remove one oxygen from COO minus the carboxylic ion part, the CO minus. Remove this oxygen, leaving with C double bond O only, and side product is water. So that is how nylon 6 is produced. Next, polyamide example nylon 66. It is used in many products including parachutes and clothing. The reactants of hexanedioic acid reacts with 1,6-diaminohexane or you call it adipic acid with hexamethylene diamine. Two carboxylic acid part, dioic acid, and then two amino. So that's why diamino. On the carboxyl group, on the carboxyl group, remove the OH for both carboxyl group part. Remove OH here on the right, remove OH on the left. In amine, remove one hydrogen on the left, remove one hydrogen on the right. And the nitrogen that is involved in removal of hydrogen, the nitrogen that is involved will form bond with the carbon double bond O that is involved of removal of OH. So this is the amide linkage over here. C double bond O, single bond with N. This is the amide linkage. So removal of water, H2O, because one OH from carboxylic acid, one hydrogen from amine. So side product, water. This is nylon 6,6. Another way to produce nylon 66 is instead of using carboxylic acid, use the acid chloride C double bond OCl. 
Acid chloride can also be used to form nylon 66, reacts with diamino, and then it can also form nylon 66. In acid chloride, remove the Cl. In amine part, remove the hydrogen. So the side product will be HCl. Same amide linkage will be formed. The C double bond O will form bond with this N. This single bond is the amide linkage. Next, polyester, PET. PET, example of polyester, you call it PET. PET stands for polyethylene terephthalate. In order to form or produce PET or polyethylene terephthalate, use the carboxylic acid, dicarboxylic acid, with diol. React these two together, remove OH from the carboxylic acid part, both sides, and remove one hydrogen from the alcohol side, both, both sides, remove hydrogen. And you're gonna have C double bond O, C double bond O, and the at the alcohol, leaving with O only for both sides because you remove both hydrogen, so leaving O and O. So this C double bond O will form bond with this O. That bond is the ester linkage. Carboxylic acid reacts with alcohol. The product is ester. This is ester PET. So this is the ester linkage, removal of water. One OH, one hydrogen. So side product H2O. Another example of polyester is Dacron or Taraline. Trade name Dacron or Taraline is to make clothing fiber. Trade name Mylar to make plastic film and recording tape. So the product, it has many names, you can call it as PET or Dacron or poly Dacron polyester, Tyrolene polyester or Mylar polyester. So it is the reaction between the dicarboxylate C double bond O, O, C. So C, O, C, C double bond O. A, C, O, C, C double bond O. And this side, COC, COC, C double bond O. Reacts with diol, alcohol, OH both sides. So here, in the dicarboxylate, remove the OR. This is OR group, OCH3. Remove OCH3 both sides, leaving with C double bond O only. So here in the product, you have C double bond O only. And then in alcohol, remove hydrogen. Remove hydrogen in alcohol for both sides. So here leaving with oxygen only. The alcoholic part, oxygen only. And then the side product, when you remove OCH3 and remove H, the product will be CH3OH. This is the side product, CH3OH, because you remove OCH3 and you remove H. So side product, CH3OH. Next type of polymerization is addition polymerization. Previously, we've learned condensation polymerization, which is polymer is formed when you eliminate small molecule. But in addition polymerization, chemical process in which monomers with multiple bonds are joined together by covalent bonds to form larger molecule without the loss of a small molecule. So there is no side product here without the loss of a small molecule. And monomers with multiple bonds. That's how you recognize addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. In addition polymerization, it involves multiple bond, monomers with multiple bond. It is Reactive intermediates at chain N. We have reactive intermediates at chain N. Initiator is needed. In addition polymer polymerization, initiator is required. Also called chain growth polymerization. In addition polymerization, 
By now, monomers are commonly used. Ethylene or ethene, C double bond C, and substituted ethylene, C double bond C with R group. Ethene, no R group, substituted ethene, C double bond C with R group. We use initiator in addition polymerization. So addition polymerization involves multiple bond monomers. So C double bond C here. So R can be hydrogen, alcohol, aryl, halogen, natural, hydroxyl, COOR, or etc. R can be any. It requires initiator for addition polymerization. And the product will be C single bond C. This double bond, one of the bond, will be given one of the electron will be given to this carbon another one electron will be given to this carbon leaving this carbon carbon single bond in the product each carbon will receive one electron from the double bond and this is how you draw polymer make sure you have the bracket and then this line is slightly over or exceed the bracket line that's how you draw the polymer this end ranges from 1000 to 50000 initiator homolysis of weak o single bond o bond o single bond o same electronegativity o single bond o bond of the peroxide from r o single bond here radical here this is the radical the oxygen has only one electron from the homolysis so we call it as ro radical which then acts to a molecule of monomer to form a carbon radical so this benzoyl peroxide or the initiator we use initiator peroxide as initiator this peroxide as initiator O single bond O, same electronegativity. So, one electron from the single bond is given to this O. And then one more electron is given to this O. It will produce the radical C single bond O radical. Okay, this one radical, another one radical. You call it as benzoyl oxy radicals so we know that radical the characteristic of radical it is very very reactive very very reactive extremely reactive radicals is extremely reactive peroxide is used as initiator in addition polymerization this is the initiator when it becomes radicals it is very reactive it will do the attack Radical polymerization of polystyrene. So here's styrene, you have styrene C double bond C. When you have radical here, this one electron will combine with one electron from C double bond C. Okay, this C double bond C, this one will be broken and one electron of it will form bond with the electron of the radical then this one more electron in the bond will be given to this carbon making this styrene radical okay when this bond form between one electron of this carbon and one electron from the radical C single bond O will be formed here C single bond O R this bond will be formed it's not radical anymore because a bond is formed but this carbon only has one lone pair electron so this become radical this is the reactive side now this is the reactive side and another styrene reacts with this radical and it will produce many more styrene molecule long long polystyrene a long polystyrene it keeps reacting with the radical and it produces long 
styrene, so you call it as polystyrene. Polyethylene, the monomer, C double bond C, monomer is ethene. So this C double bond C, one electron from this bond given to this carbon, one electron will be reacted with the radical, peroxide radical, and the reaction is repeated again and again. And it will become like this, C single bond C, and then it will be bonded with another CH2. Here it will be bonded to another CH2. So this is the repeating unit. Make sure in drawing repeating unit, there is no N symbol here. For N symbol, on drawing polymer. For drawing repeating unit, there is no N. So polyethylene, the uses of it is firm, toys, bottles, plastic bags, containers, electrical insulation. PVC, polyvinyl chloride. This is the monomer. One electron will be given to this carbon. Another one electron will form bond with the peroxide radical and the reaction is repeated again and again. And it will become repeating unit like this. C single bond C, leaving it with C single bond C. And this carbon will be bonded with another repeating unit. This carbon here will be bonded with another repeating unit. And when you have a lot of repeating unit, it becomes polymer. So polyvinyl chloride, PVC. Used in pipe, siding, flotile, gutters, clothing, toys. Polystyrene, another polystyrene. Here, polyethylene. This is the polystyrene that I show you the example. Polystyrene, this one. This is the monomer. C double bond CH, CH2 double bond CH with one benzene ring. So this is the monomer of polystyrene. One electron from this bond will be given to this carbon, becomes radical. And then one more electron will form bond with the radicals and the reaction is repeated again and again, becomes this repeating unit. Uses for packaging toys, clear cups, egg cartons, coffee cup, electrical components, parts of furniture. So this is polystyrene. Teflon. Teflon, monomer CF2, double bond CF2. This is Teflon. Repeating unit of Teflon, CF2, single bond CF2. Because the double bond here, one electron given to this carbon, carbon radical, and then one more electron will form bond with peroxide and the reaction is repeated, becomes repeating unit Teflon. It's uses in coating on cooking utensils, electrical insulation, barrier. If you are familiar with cooking utensil brand Tefal, the name comes from Teflon. The Tefal, Teflon means for use for coating on cooking utensil. That's why the name for uh, brand cooking utensil brand is Tefal. It comes from the name of Teflon. Synthetic rubber. It has some of properties of natural rubber, but synthetic man-made, including being waterproof and elastic, also have some improved properties compared to the natural rubber. It's tougher, more flexible, and more durable. Use in wetsuits and tires. There's one three butadiene, four carbon in total, but double bond at carbon one and double bond at carbon three. So this is still addition polymerization because the monomer is consists of multiple bonds. So here, C double bond C, C double bond C. The bond breaking, one electron goes to this carbon here, one electron here will be given to this carbon and one electron this carbon, one electron this carbon. 
So it reacts with another 1,3-butadiene. The polymerization form is you're going to have double bond in the middle here. Leaving with C, single bond. C, single bond C. Because the double bond here is broken to become a, a single electron, single electron. Okay, so C, single bond C. This one, C, single bond C. And two electrons join together. Okay, this one electron, one electron, two electrons join together can form new bond. So that's why C double bond C in the middle here. And then double bond broken into two lone pair electrons. Two electrons lone pair. One and another one. So C single bond C. So you have repeating units of cis poly 1 3 butadiene. Okay, still 4 carbon in total. Polymer, repeating unit, 4 carbon in total. 1 3 butadiene, but polymerization. This is synthetic rubber. Another example for synthetic rubber the reactant is 2 chloro 1 3 butadiene. C double bond C at carbon 1 and at carbon 3. This first double bond, C double bond C, this double bond is broken to become two single electron pair, electron lone pair, two single electron lone pair. Between this one electron and another one electron from this bond, it will form double bond for carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 here, form double bond. And when this bond is broken, and this bond is also broken, these two will become single bond C, single bond C. This one C, single bond C, like this C, single bond C, C, single bond C, double bond in the middle. So you call it as polychloroprene, polychloroprene or neoprene. It is also known as neoprene. Thank you.